If I want to know the length of a curve described in polar coordinates, uh, one thing I could do is parameterize it. So let's take a look at a particular curve. All right, and this curve is defined between alpha and beta. So this is the angle alpha and beta. And let's suppose that this particular curve is defined by a polar equation, r equals some function of theta. So what are the points on this curve? In terms of polar coordinates, each point on this curve is given by the theta value and its r value given by the equation of this curve. But, uh, so that's my r and my theta. What are those in normal Cartesian coordinates? Well, the transformation from polar into Cartesian says you're going to take the radius r of theta And in the x, you're going to multiply it by cosine of the theta. And the y, you'll multiply it by the sine of theta. OK, so what does that give us? Well, x would equal r of theta cosine of theta. And y is the same thing, but with sine of theta x equals r cosine, y equals r sine. That makes perfect sense, it's just that the r is now a function of theta. Okay, well this is a parameterization. Uh, instead of t, we're using theta, but that's cool. The theta values must range between alpha and beta. So this is the parameterization of a polar curve. a curve defined by a polar equation. And I know what the length of a parameterized curve is. The length of a parameterized curve is a to b, square root, dx dt squared, plus dy dt squared dt. This is the length of a parameterized curve. Okay, it's an awful arrow. There we go. So there's the length of a parameterized curve. Um, but in our case, we didn't use t's, we used thetas. So let's uh, tweak this just a little bit to have thetas instead of t's. That's easy enough. Instead of a and b, we called the endpoints alpha and beta pretty common for uh, angles to use Greek letters. So theta, 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 bam, there we have it. Um, but this is the same regardless of the actual choice of the polar curve. So maybe we could simplify this formula. And it turns out you can. Uh, we'll compute what dx d theta and dy d theta are. Um, dx d theta, you can use the product rule. And... Uh, what would that be? It would be the second times the derivative of the first, which I'll write as dr d theta, plus the first, which I'll just write as r, times the derivative of the second, so that would be negative sine of theta. And so I'll just plug that in to the formula here. Cosine of theta, dr d theta, squared, excuse me, not squared yet, plus, well, minus, I suppose, r sine of theta. All right, you could do the same thing for dy d theta. I'm not going to actually do all this out, because basically you just do a bunch of algebra and trig. And the formula you wind up with is alpha the beta square root of r squared plus dr d theta squared d theta. So basically a bunch of sine squares plus cosine squares cancel out in this part that I omitted to get you this formula for length. Or if you prefer to remember that these are both functions of theta, 
you could also write it as r of theta squared plus r prime of theta squared. Same thing, dr d theta is r prime of theta. So there are our formulas. Uh, and uh, same thing, of course, just different notation. And let's use these to uh, solve some arc length problems. Well, there's one important arc length problem. Let's prove that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. Pi times diameter, or 2 pi r. And uh, this is actually, you know, the proof is really by definition. By definition, pi gives you the ratio of the diameter to the circumference, or sorry, the circumference to the diameter. But let's go ahead and use this formula and check this out using the formula. So, first of all, what is the circle of radius r? We might as well assume it's centered at the origin so that we have a very easy equation that we can use for the circle. That would be r equals big R. There's our equation. And in fact, we could just think of this as for every theta value, our radius is big R. All right, and this, of course, is running from 0 to 2 pi. So the length of this curve, assuming we only want one rotation to get the circumference, which we do, is 0 to 2 pi. Uh, let me write the formula. Alpha to beta, square root of r squared plus dr d theta squared, d theta. All right, that's going to be 0 to 2 pi. Square root of the r is just big R in this case. And what's the derivative? r prime of theta or dr d theta? Well, this r here has nothing to do with theta, so that means it has a big old goose egg as its derivative, 0, which means it does nothing for me. Square root of r squared, we're assuming that r is positive, so we don't need absolute values. We're just integrating from 0 to 2 pi of r d theta. Oh, goodness, but that's, of course, just r theta from 0 to 2 pi, 2 pi r minus 0 r. Scratch that out. There is our Riga proof here. So length is equal to 2 pi r. That finishes my proof. All right, so that was, of course, easy. It makes sense that you know we're just doing a simple circle. So finding that circumference was not too bad. Let's take a look at one more example. We're going to find the circumference of a spiral. R equals uh, theta squared from the polar coordinate 0, 0 to the polar coordinate 5 square root of 5. Okay, so what the heck is going on here? Uh, first of all, you don't really need a picture for this, but uh, I'll go ahead and draw one anyway. Uh, first of all, let's remember these polar coordinates, these are r and theta values. It's an r and that's a theta. And uh, I'm going to pull out a calculator real quick here. What is the square root of 5? The square root of 5 is 2.23. And uh, so pi divided by 2 is 1.57. So we know that this is somewhere between pi over 2, which is about 1.57, and pi, which is about 3.14. All right, so somewhere between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, I'll draw this point in purple, perhaps. And somewhere in between there, I'm just going to draw this. It's going to go out to 5. Of course, the first point is even easier because it's just at distance zero from the origin at going straight out to the right. That's, of course, just the origin itself. And uh, basically what happens is as my angle gets bigger, my radius r gets bigger, and so we end up with this sort of situation. 
and it would keep going, of course, getting bigger and bigger and spiraling further and further. This is no longer to scale, any sort of scale, but that's why we called it a spiral. Okay, but we only want it between these two points here, the blue point and this purple point. And this is just as easy as using the formula. The picture doesn't actually help me because all I need for the length is my alpha and my beta square root. I need a r squared and I need its derivative to be squared. Okay, well, hey, there's my radius r. So that's going to be theta squared, all squared. Its derivative, dr d theta, is 2 theta. So there's that. My alpha, my beta, well, alpha, uh, we have two choices, 0 and square root of 5. And it's always going to be from smaller to bigger. All right, so let's uh, square this out from 0 to root 5. We have theta to the fourth plus 4 theta squared d theta. OK, uh, 0 to root 5. I'm getting, um, well, how do I do this? Well, I could factor out a theta squared, leaving me with theta squared plus 4. and uh, Square root of theta squared is absolute value theta. But the theta values that I care about uh, are all positive, 0 to root 5. They're not negative, at least, which means that the absolute value is doing nothing useful. So I can just drop it off. Oh, boy. Uh, let me ponder this. I think that's a substitution problem, isn't it? Let u equal theta squared plus 4. So my du is 2 theta d theta, and I just need a theta d theta, so I'll make that 1 half du. All right, put all that uh, into up here. Oh, I could change my theta bounds too, can I? Uh, if theta is equal to root 5, now my u is equal to 5 plus 4 is 9. If theta is equal to 0, 0 plus 4 is 4. So I've got the integral from 4 to 9, of 1 half square root u du. All right, uh, rewrite that as u to the 1 half. That'll get me uh, 1 half u to the 3 halves times 2 thirds from 4 to 9. Cancel out the half with the 2. So I've got 1 third u to the 3 halves from 4 to 9. It's 1 third times 9 to the 3 halves. So that's 3 cubed is 27 minus 4 to the 3 halves. That's 2 to the third, which is 8. 27 minus 8 is 19. 19 thirds. For my final answer, uh, that's the length of... this spiraled curve right here.